So smart trainers and erg mode, what is it all about? Well, today let's dive into it and have a look. First of all, the definition of the word erg is shortened from ergo, and the direct translation from Greek is the word work. So you can consider this work mode. Indoor rowing machines have been known as ergometers for a long time, and with the invention of smart trainers, they've adapted that word and shortened it down to erg mode for a certain mode that our trainers can be in. So what exactly is erg mode? Erg mode is one of the three or four different modes a smart trainer can be put into for your workouts. The other modes being basic or level mode, which turns your smart trainer into a, I guess, effectively an exercise bike with different settings and you know, one to 10, quite simple mode. Sim mode, which takes into account your weight, your height, CDA, bike type, crosswinds, and things like that. Depending on the software you're using, we're very familiar with sim mode with free riding on Zwift. And then we have erg mode, what this video is about today. Erg mode will lock in a prescribed wattage and hold that resistance regardless of your cadence and regardless of the gearing that you're in. So for example, setting it to 300 watts, you have to do 300 watts, there's no choice. You have to do the prescribed wattage that erg mode will hold you to. So what that means is if you set erg mode to 300 watts, it'll clamp you at 300 watts regardless of being at 70 RPM, 110 RPM, 130 RPM, in the saddle, out of the saddle. You have to do 300 watts, you have to hold the wheel and hold that effort at 300 watts. It can be tough. So that's the most simplified version of what erg mode is, but you add software on top of this that automatically changes that resistance or those zones for you, and you've got a really, really good workout application. A key feature of this software is to base those workouts based on percentage of FTP, not just raw numbers, so not just 300 watts, because 300 watts for me is different for 300 watts for you and everybody else. So it'll set it based on your FTP or a percentage of, which means you and I can both do the same workout at different raw power numbers and still get the same training effect. Erg mode is a little bit like motor pacing where somebody else has the accelerator and you don't get to choose the intensity, you just have to hold the wheel and keep up. If they twist the throttle and go harder, you've got to go harder. If they back it off a little bit and slow down, you get to slow down as well. You do not have control of the speed, you just have to hold the wheel. However, the difference between motor pacing outdoors and erg mode indoors is if you drop the wheel of that motorbike outdoors, you can soft pedal, you can pull over, have a bit of a rest, call it a day, or get back into it once the motorbike pulls over. Erg mode is a little different. Erg mode is a little evil when it comes to this. If you back off a little bit, it'll clamp those watts harder. There is no dropping the wheel. It will make you do those watts. And I'll introduce you now to what's called the spiral of death. What's actually happening is the trainer itself will have to change its resistance it applies based on your pedal stroke. So humans aren't smooth, we're a little erratic. So within erg mode, even though it's set to 300 watts, it'll be 310, 290, 300, 310, 280, 350. It'll just oscillate a little bit. Different trainers do it differently. Well, different trainers are a little smoother than others and the smoother your pedal stroke, the better it is. But if you drop off, if you drop down to 280, then 270, and your pedal stroke goes to 250, you can see what's gonna happen. It'll clamp a little harder and try and raise, well, it keeps the trainer's wattage at 300. It doesn't keep your wattage there, it's up to you to keep your wattage there. If you can't, spiral of death. Different smart trainers handle the transition changes a little differently, some faster than others. So for short efforts between five and 15 seconds, you can get a lot of lag time there, both transitioning to the power you need to be and back down. So for shorter sprint efforts, I don't recommend erg mode. For anything about 20 seconds or above, it can be useful. So why do I like erg mode? Well, it adds really, really good structure to a training session. You can see exactly what's coming up, where you've been, and how hard you have to go. If you're having a good day, it's great to fight every one of those intervals and hit that target power. It can be quite motivating. Once you're ticking those boxes off and getting to the end, it's a good day. And for step test, it's brilliant. It sets the wattage for you. You just pedal until you enter the spiral of death and then you can do the calculations from there about what your FTP is. Now, why I hate erg mode? Well, it's artificial. It doesn't replicate anything in the real world. There is nowhere outside that will force you to hold a certain wattage. Well, maybe on someone's wheel up a hill, or as I said before, the motor pacing session, but with those, you can always call it quits and back off. With erg mode, if you can't hit your numbers on the day, it can be really demotivating, and hitting that spiral of death halfway through a session uh, can be a horrible day. To escape the spiral of death on a bad day, some software does have a bit of a toggle where you can up or down your FTP or the intensity for each erg effort. If you're not having a good one, you can pull it down to 90%, or if you're having a good day and you can really hit those targets, you're super motivated, you can actually bump that up to about 110%. And depending on the training that you're on and how smooth your pedal stroke is, I guess that comes down to your fatigue levels as well, you can really cook yourself at FTP or just over FTP for prolonged efforts on erg mode. What's actually happening there is it'll oscillate above and below and above and below, trying to hold those watts. 
Those little above spikes though, they'll really tax the system and the little bits below, they're not enough to recover the system. So you may even find it difficult to hold FTP for 10 minutes in erg mode. So that's all about erg mode and what it is. Let's jump on the bike and see it in action. A demonstration of erg mode on the bike. What I'm using is the Wahoo Fitness app on the iPad to control the Wahoo kicker. You can see the different modes I've currently got now. So level mode, resistance mode, erg mode is what we're after tonight. So I've used 300 watts as my example so far. Let's go to 300 watts on erg mode. You hear the resistance kick in. And it took a few seconds there, now I'm at 300 watts. So my cadence at the moment is sitting on 80. If I bring that up to 100, I'm still doing 300 watts. If I bring that cadence down, takes a few seconds, and I'm still doing 300 watts. As you can see, regardless of the cadence I'm doing, it makes me do 300 watts. Whew. So the most artificial or unnatural thing with erg mode is when you back off just a little bit, like that, it gets harder straight away. And to get back on it, you've got to push through. So there's no rest, there's no let up. That's the first thing you have to understand about erg mode is that it's not natural to when you back off that things get so much harder. Or if you were to keep increasing your cadence and increasing your cadence and increasing your cadence, it won't stop until you level out and the system comes up to the prescribed wattage. So here, I can effectively spin out, but it isn't until I stabilize the cadence that it's able to match those watts and hold me at 300. Erg mode likes stability of cadence. So once it's up to a certain cadence level, then it can adjust and set those watts to what we saw there, 300. If you continue to increase your, your cadence, it'll keep chasing you a little bit behind, like a dog after a ball. And you can go to 160 RPM, you can get there, but it's until you stop increasing that cadence, that's when it locks in and levels in. So should you change gears in erg mode? Well, you typically don't need to. There's a whole other video I'll do on that though. For now, stick in your 53, probably 17 or 18 on the back. That should do you just right for most of your sessions. So the spiral of death, let me show you that in two different scenarios. So back up to 300. Okay, the first scenario of spiral of death is the lack of concentration. If you just happen to look behind or go for a grab of your drink and need to get back up to, I'm done. It stops. It wanted to keep me at 300 and I wasn't pedaling. It's all about concentration of the mind and watching that cadence as well. So it'll disengage erg mode for a few seconds and then I'm back up to speed. The next one of spiral of death mode is the ramp adjustment where you just can't match it. So it goes to a prescribed wattage that you just can't hold. Let me show you that, we'll go to 600 watts. I can hold 600 watts for a few seconds, but oh, ah, ah. that's it. That there is a spiral of death. It happens very, very quickly. I can hold 600 for, look on a good day, over a minute. Then, not even a few seconds. I didn't attack the gear change correctly. Let me show you how to ride erg mode both into up transition and down transition. Since every trainer is a little bit different in itself, this is the kicker too. I'll show you how I ride those transition changes. We'll go from 300 to 600, and we have to attack that steep change. So 300 into 600, we have to attack it. We have to attack that 600. Okay, it's stabilized, and we're on. We're on 600. As long as you attack that start, and let's say I can't hold it, and we're on spiral of death. That you have to attack that watt change. Even overpower the machine, overspin it a little bit, it'll then calm down and set you on that 600 watts. The next example of erg mode that I'll give to save you hitting the spiral of death is riding a high wattage, transitioning into a lower wattage, and not hitting the spiral of death. 
what you have to do is ride it out. Just let the system do the change, don't need to attack it. And number one thing you can't do is back off the pedals. At the end of a hard interval, the first thing you want to do is five, four, three, two, uh, and have a rest. You can't do that. You need to five, four, three, two. You keep riding and wait for the system to do the change. So on the up, uptake of a transition of power, you've got to attack it. On the downtake of the power, you have to ride it out. So attack and ride it out. Let me show you the ride it out part. So we'll go up to 500 watts. See, I attacked into that 500 watts so I could sustain that. So we're sitting on 500. We'll go down to 200 watts. And there, I just kept pushing through and waited for the system to come down. Instant change down. You've got to ride through that down change. What happens if you don't ride through the down change and you back off the pedals too much? Let's have a look at that. So back to 500, I attack into 500. Five, four, three, two, one. Oh, we're down 200 watts. Okay, I uh, pedal easy and spiral of death. Got to ride through that transition change down. Okay, that's it for the practical session tonight. Let's wrap this video up. So there we have it, erg mode explained and demonstrated today here on the bike. Some people love it, some people hate it. I'm on the fence. I'm learning to love it with the recent training efforts I've been doing, so I suspect I'll be using it a lot more. It is optional in workout mode as well. You can toggle it on or toggle it off if you find it easier, and especially for those shorter efforts where erg mode just might not kick in quick enough for you. Okay, we'll leave it there for today. Thanks for watching. Your subscriptions, likes, and comments always appreciated. We'll see you soon. I can hold 600 watts for a few seconds, but... Oh. Ah. Ah. That's it. That there is a spiral of death. It happens very, very quickly.